All right, Money B22 says, what are your thoughts on a pretty common store-bought product like Green Max from Scott's 2702? Uh, derived from ammonium sulfate, methylene urea, urea, potassium sulfate, and iron sucrate contains 6.38 slowly available nitrogen for methylene ureas. I use it and like it, and like it, but really interested to get your thoughts considering it's a widely available product and love your videos to try to understand application and necessity better. Mm -hmm. Visual response is one aspect, but like to have an understanding on causation which your videos have been great at when it comes to being mindful, mindful of all variables involved. From a granular approach, I've used Green Max or Pennington 2211 containing 50% Uflex, whatever that is. <laughs> okay, I can explain Uflex if you want. And 3% iron. Then just, then just, I don't know, there's a typo there, just something with other options to test out occasionally. And then I replied back to that and I said, if I applied one pound per thousand square feet, the product will likely result in acceptable response, but that is due to the nitrogen. The other components, potassium and iron are not likely beneficial. I will show in a future video that iron sucrate is very unlikely to ever be beneficial to turf grass. With regards to the methylene ureas, they will also result in an acceptable turf grass response, albeit much more expensive than urea, ammonium sulfate and sulfur coated urea. So they're at, he's asking basically, what do I think about this product? And you have to keep in, guy, in mind guys, any product that contains nitrogen that is either inorganic or, or either either inorganic like a soluble form of nitrogen like urea or ammonium nitrate ammonium sulfate or calcium nitrate or whatever or an organic or slowly released form. in other words it's a nitrogen form that will break down at some point if it contains that and it's applied at the proper rate for that product it's probably going to result in acceptable turf grass i mean i've done a lot of freaking work with this stuff and I don't think I've ever used a nitrogen product that didn't result in an acceptable turf grass. The question is, how much does that cost to result in that, ex that response? And I'm going to go over that. I, I, I don't know if nitrogen is going to be the next top. It wasn't going to be. I was going to go over potassium next. But, but I guess I can go over nitrogen if that's what you guys feel like you want to hear in, ter in terms of knowing how to blend things properly and, to, and do it in a way that provides you with the best agronomic odds of seeing a response for the least amount of money anyway he says really appreciate it we'll definitely look forward to the next video loved when you did the shorts too and on key, part, key parts of the videos too great hook to get a full breakdown would be cool to get your breakdown on the most efficient or useful for options any average joke could pick up at home depot or on the web like based on your analysis of which products or feed or feed com feed companies tend to be the most trusted when it comes to quality products, keep up the solid work. So that came from uh, Money B twenty two. So thanks Money B for that that comment. It, it kind of gets me thinking about nitrogen. Uflex is a product that's added in there to reduce gaseous loss, basically of nitrogen. I'm not going to go into the whole whether it's volatilization or urea, you know, urease inhibitor or nitrification inhibitor. I'll just call it gaseous loss if you want to call it that. I had a conversation today on the phone. In fact, let me go back to me. I had a conversation today on the phone with a gentleman who asked about that exact question. You know, what's the difference between applying granular versus foliar urea when you have, say, a Umax in it or not? And I, I told him, I don't know. I can't think of a literature of a, article off the top of my head that directly compared that although i'm sure it exists i just gotta go look it up but what i told him was and this gentleman's asking containing 50 percent uflex what i told him was that the urease inhibitors and nitrification nitrification inhibitors like mbpt and there's some other other urease inhibitors that are intended to reduce gaseous loss like volatilization generally speaking those compounds let's just take umax so it's urea that's been sprayed with this additive generally speaking when those things are applied as a granular you're going to have when your urea is applied let's, let's just say you're going to get 40 percent volatilization i'm just pulling that out of thin air you're going to get 40 percent volatilization on say ph you know eight or something of a soil if you applied that same amount with Umax, that 40% volatilization might be reduced by half. So you might only get 20% volatilization from that Umax. Okay. So those products do reduce gaseous loss. That's pretty clear in the literature. But what is also equally clear in the literature is that the turf grass response to those sources don't differ that much from urea, even if there is gaseous loss of nitrogen from urea. And the cost of those products like Umax might be 
$1,300 a ton, $1,200 a ton, whatever. I don't know what it is now. You know, eight years ago, it was $1,100 a ton and urea was $600 a ton. So roughly you're going to, you're not going to double the cost of urea, but you're going to come close to it. I mean, might, let's say urea is $800 a ton. You might be $1,300 a ton, $1,400 a ton for UMAX. I don't know. We have to go look it up. Someone can look it up and post it in the chat. But, um, the point is you're going to pay a lot more for that UMAX. You're not going to pay 5% more or 10% more. You're going to pay a lot more. And you're not, I haven't seen in the literature, nor have I seen in my own research, which I have published. I have not seen a concomitant increase in quality or growth from the UMAX and the gaseous law, the additive type products, nitrogen enhanced products that reduced gaseous loss. They will reduce gaseous loss, but I have not seen it actually result in a concomitant increase in turf response. Now, in terms of like Green Max and all these other products and iron sucrate and all the, I've gone over the iron stuff, so I wouldn't apply any granular iron full stop period. I don't care if it's chelated or not. I wouldn't apply it. It's just the chances of seeing a response are so low compared to foliar applied iron that it's to me, it's not worth, it. it's not worth the risk. You might get a response 5% of the time from granular iron. If it's chelated five, 10% of the time, kind of depending on the situation and the rate and so forth. I mean, if it's severely iron chlor chlorotic turf grass, you might see a response to granular iron chelate maybe. Um, so let's, let's just say 10% of the time, maybe you might see a response to response to granular iron and that's being generous. Well, on the flip side, applying it as a liquid, you would see a response 90% of the time or more. So, and you would do it with most likely less money. So to me, I don't see much value in applying granular iron of any source because I can get the same response for much less money applying it as a foliar.